Welcome to our Tuesday edition of Live at Five. I'm Haley Gordon. And I'm Sierra McQueen. The holiday season is upon us, so stay updated with all of our local events by checking out the Richmond Observer Community Calendar. All information can be found on the RO app for Apple and Android devices or by visiting our website at richmondobserver.com. And now for tonight's news. The Hamlet Police Department is seeking information regarding a possible illicit Christmas shopping expedition in the Pinecroft neighborhood. Two Caucasian males in a black Ford F-150 were noted to be driving slowly through the area around Locust Street on Sunday, November 26, around 2 p.m. Captain Randy Dover of the Hamlet Police Department indicated that the two men may have been looking for packages bought online for Black Friday that were being delivered to the front steps of homes. Captain Dover stated, people need to be careful as much as they can about leaving packages out on the doorstep. Dover advised anyone who has ordered anything that might be delivered in the next few days to be mindful of the need to not leave such packages unattended any longer than is necessary. John Cleary, director of First Health Fitness, has been recognized as the 2017 winner of the Hank Boyner Pioneer Award by the Medical Fitness Association. The Hank Boyner Pioneer Award is given to an individual who has significantly advanced the medical fitness industry through their service to the industry and the association. He joined First Health Fitness of the Carolinas in 1997 as the aquatics director, then became operations director and later regional operations director before being named director of all five First Health Fitness locations. Clary stated, this award really belongs to the managers and staff at First Health Fitness whose creativity, enthusiasm, and expertise brings these programs to life. They are the ones who consistently innovate and make First Health Fitness recognized across the country as a leader in medical fitness. For more information on First Health Fitness and programs offered in your area, visit www.firsthealth.org slash fitness. In this week's edition of the RO's exclusive local business spotlight column, contributor Cleve Blacksley meets with Sarah Ferguson, the owner of Nectar Coffee Shop in Rockingham. Nectar Coffee Shop is located inside the Hive and is open Monday through Friday, 10 to 7, and Saturdays, 10 to 3. On the RO website, you can now find Richmond County Schools honor roll list for the first nine weeks. Visit richmondobserver.com to view all Richmond County Schools honor roll list. Congratulations to all honor roll students. At Richmond Community College, we can prepare you for a high skill, high paying career in a variety of fields. From business to education, engineering, utilities, healthcare, criminal justice, information technology, and human services. At Richmond Community College, we can save you thousands of dollars on tuition through our university transfer programs that provide a seamless transition to universities and colleges throughout North Carolina. At Richmond Community College, we are always developing new courses and programs in response to the communities we serve. We offer day, evening, and online courses, and you can now complete five curriculum programs entirely online. At Richmond Community College, we believe in helping you prepare for a better life. Richmond Community College, local college, big impact. McNair Auto Sales is the place to buy your pre-owned car, truck, or van. To be the best, it takes big selection, friendly staff, and great pricing. We guarantee a no-hassle buying experience, and financing is available right on site. So come see us today. We're located at 1026 East Broad Avenue in Rockingham. And remember, with over 40 years of experience, you know McNair is the name you can trust. Welcome back to Live at Five. Raiders Wrestling earned second place finish at Cold Turkey Duels on Saturday. Despite it only being the second meet of the season, the Richmond Senior High School wrestling team improved its overall placement. The Raiders won their first four matches of the day before falling to Asheboro for the second week in a row. Raiders senior Brandon Nifong and sophomores Joey Nicholson and Steven Morales all went undefeated on the day at the Cold Turkey Duels. 
Richmond finished second in the contest and managed to take wins over Union Pines, Chatham Charter, Chatham Central, and Southwestern Randolph. The single loss was a 57-24 fall to the Blue Comets. Coach Nicholson mentioned that he was pleased the Raiders closed the gap a little bit this week and that he hopes to continue the improvement. The Raiders will be home on Saturday, December 2nd for a six-team dual tournament. The Richmond Senior High School Lady Raiders basketball team was back in the gym Monday getting ready for the season opener on Wednesday. According to the head coach Rosalind McDonald, now in her third season at the helm of the Lady Raiders program, she said they have a lot of fast players this year. The Lady Raiders basketball team will open their regular season with a non-conference away game at Fairmount High School in Rosen County on Wednesday before beginning SAC play at home against Purnell Sweat High School on Tuesday, December 5th. After these messages, we will go to Lance Jenkins and Russell Parker for your Tuesday segment of our football recap. Stay tuned. I'm Kelly. I worked at Champion Ford for two years. Six years. Three years. One year. I've been at Champion Ford for 13 years. One whole year. 15 years. I'm Jamie and I've been at Champion Ford for 12 years. I've been here eight years. Champion prices, champion service, champion experience. It treat you like a champion today at Champion Ford. Just down the road from my prices, championfordlincoln.com. We are Champion Ford. Family Pharmacy has been serving Richmond County since April 2007, and we have enjoyed getting to know our customers since then. We take our jobs very seriously, and we'll do whatever we can to make sure you have what you need. Come visit us on Fayetteville Road in Rockingham, and we will treat you like family. You guys just outdo yourselves every day. And I really appreciate it. I honest to God don't know what I would do if it worked for you. The things that you do, I'm in approval of. And thank you. I, 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 I don't know what else to say other than thank you. And welcome back to Live at 5, your Tuesday edition. And of course, Tuesday is always a very special day. It is your college football roundup from the past weekend. And this past weekend was nothing shy of exciting. And I'm excited to be in studio today with Russell Parker, our college football analyst and executive producer. Russell, glad to have you. Thanks for having me here. Uh, not on great circumstances this week <laughs> well, for depends me. Depends on who you ask. <laughs> yeah, for, <laughs> for you, okay. So yeah, let's talk about why. Uh, number one, Alabama, the second consecutive number one team to get beaten by the Auburn Tigers. Auburn won the Iron Bowl and, of course, earned a spot in the SEC title game. What happened here with the Crimson Tide? Well, I didn't get to watch the full game. I was in Greensboro when uh, that game was going on, and I got, it stressed me out so much. But I don't think that Alabama uh, was ready for it. They had a lot of injuries uh, over the past couple of weeks, too, leading up to this game. And bunch of them were not even fully recovered. But Auburn, they just they were firing all six cylinders. They were they were phenomenal. I yeah. have to say that to be honest. Certainly looked good. Auburn of course advances to the SEC title game. They'll play Georgia this week. That should be a big one. We'll talk yes. about that in just a bit. Ohio State got the job done against Michigan. We both picked that one right, as you can see on the board. And of course, uh, Ohio State will take on Wisconsin for the Big Ten Championship coming up this game. week. Ohio State, I know we're going to talk about predictions in a minute, but what's Ohio State got to do to win this game against the undefeated Wisconsin team? Well, I think it's going to take a lot of, they're going to have to get really good on offense because they have not been that great with defense this year. Right. Uh, they've had a lot of teams running the score up on them this year, uh, and Wisconsin's a really good team. So they'll have to work on the defense a little bit more this time around. Well, you know, the Buckeyes beat Michigan this past weekend, and, of course, that game was not not an easy game for Ohio State. If you look at the score, it looked like they led. They probably led for a while, and no, they didn't. It was a close game to the very end. But that's rivalry uh, week. Every, it doesn't matter your record. It doesn't that's matter true. if you're good or you're bad. You're going to play your rival with the best you possibly can, and it's always going to come down to a great game. That's very true, and, of course, we both got this one right. Thank the Lord. You had me scared for a minute there. The Tar Heels uh, did not get the job done in Raleigh. NC State wins its regular season uh, 
or its last game of the regular season, of course, is waiting now to see what bowl they will go to. And I think they'll get a good one. State oh, got yeah. the job done. Carolina season's over, though. Larry Fedora, head coach at Carolina, is he going to stay for another season? You think one more year? I think he'll get one more year. He's done a pretty good job so far at South Carolina. Uh, this year's been not a bad year for them. Uh, for SEC standards, maybe not as great because a lot of it, a lot of college football uh, head coaches are getting fired right now, left and right in the That's SEC. That's exactly right. And South Carolina is dodging that bullet right now. Yeah, of course. No, yeah, and let's talk about – while we're on the SEC, let's talk about Tennessee because I don't know if we'll get another chance to talk about it. Tennessee, that whole process has been a debacle. Oh, yeah. You know, they were going to hire Greg Schiano, offensive coordinator right now at Ohio State, former head coach at Rutgers, and of course former head coach of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But now – uh, it was just a protest, and within 24 hours' time, they go from Greg Schiano as the next head coach at Tennessee to he's not being considered. Yeah. And now, uh, matter of fact, last night at WWE Monday Night Raw, it was actually in Knoxville. Yep. And during one of the matches, people were chanting for the firing of the AD at Tennessee. <laughs> you got to wonder if that's going to happen considering the total mishandling of this whole process. Now, it's almost like they can't find somebody to coach right. Tennessee. It and Tennessee's been on a downhill for a long time now. Um, but I have heard some rumors that Lane Kiffin may go over there. And you, I mean, and years ago, rumor, I'd have, but. Well, I'd have <laughs> never thought that was going to happen. But I was last, listening to Colin Cowherd today on The Herd on Fox Sports, and he said something I agree with, that may be their best yeah, option. Definitely. He's got a lot. He went to USC, done okay there. Come to Alabama uh, underneath the man, Nick Saban. Mm -hmm. And now he's doing pretty well at uh, Fort Delaney. Florida Atlantic. Turned that team around in one year. Yeah. Yeah. Lane Kiffin certainly could be the option. Uh, it is, news has been released earlier this afternoon that Mike Gundy at Oklahoma State is also being considered for Tennessee. But like I said, you've got to wonder, at this point, whoever they hire, I mean, how, they're going to feel like they were fifth, sixth choice. And the yeah. bottom line is they were. And from my understanding, too, Texas A&M, you know, they fired uh, their head coach, Kevin Sumlin. Yep. And now they're trying to get Florida State's uh, Jimbo Fisher. That's right, yeah, and, and that is very likely to happen. Of course, Notre Dame and Stanford, I got this one wrong. The Fighting Irish did not get the job done on the road. Stanford did not have to win this game to play in the Pac-12 Conference Championship, but they did have to have a Washington State loss, and that happened. And, of course, with Stanford now winning this game, you got that pick right. Yep. I thought for sure I was right on this one, but you were right. Stanford will now play USC for the Pac-12 Championship. Yep. And uh, I think Stanford is always – I think they got a well-rounded football team every season. Um, back when the Oregon was in the championship run, they were always the one where Oregon would choke up at and never could defeat. Mm -hmm. uh, Stanford, they can play really well in big games. That's right, and they proved that this past week, and they'll have a chance to win the title game. Probably find themselves in the Rose Bowl if they win this if this oh, next yeah. game. Yeah, and of course Clemson and South Carolina. Um, for some reason, I thought I had picked South Carolina last week, but evidently you did. I thought When I saw that game, I was like, gosh, I got this one wrong. But <laughs> you picked South Carolina. I picked Clemson, and, of course, Clemson did get the job done. Um, Will Muschamp over in South Carolina, decent season, but South Carolina is still at that point. They were when Steve Spur was there. They're just not getting into t contention with the SEC East. I mean, do you see South Carolina ever being a top team in the SEC East? You know, I think give it a little more time for them. I think they can get somewhere with their team. Um, they certainly have improved uh, mm -hmm. past few years, and I think they're going to – they can – they almost beat Clemson this past weekend. So, uh, but, yeah, I think they're a good team, and they got a good coach. Well, let's talk about the championship games coming up this week. We talked about it just a minute ago, Pac-12 championship. Stanford and USC, who you got winning this game? I'm going to go with Stanford on this one. They, they beat Notre Dame. Um, and I think they're going to beat USC, but they're going to go down into California territory to play this game. And so it's almost like South, South, Southern California is going to have the home field advantage here, but I think Stanford can walk in there and win. I think Stanford's going to have a strong presence at the Pac-12 championship game. I got Stanford winning as well. You don't come off a game like Notre Dame, win that one, and then lose to USC. Right. I think they've got the momentum right now. Stanford wins. The AAC championship, Memphis and UCF, if UCF wins this game, they will be 12-0. You think UCF continues the streak? Yes, they will. Mm. And I would like to see them move up even more into the uh, the rankings because I still feel like they're not getting as much uh, recognition as they should be. And they're not even in the top ten from the AP and the coaches poll. So, um, but I think UCF is going to get done against Memphis. 
for sure. Yep, and if UCF does get it done, they finish 12-0, and it's going to be hard to see how they shouldn't be considered for at least a top six spot. Especially if all the top four teams fall out this Loose. week. yeah. Why can you not put UCF in? I know, and of course a lot of people would argue they're not in a Power 5 conference, but in, in college football D1, it's hard to win 12 straight games, folks. Mm -hmm. And, and you, they're the only team left standing. It's hard to see why they can't be considered. The Big, the, uh, Big 12 championship, TCU and Oklahoma, the Sooners uh, likely going to, with a win, will certainly be in the playoff. Mm -hmm. uh, with a loss, probably won't. But Oklahoma uh, has a big chance this week to make a strong statement going to the college football playoff. Do you have Oklahoma or TCU in this game? I'm going to go with TCU on this Ooh, one. Wow. Uh, we've seen it last week. Miami lost to a team they probably shouldn't have lost to. Mm -hmm. uh, Clemson lost to a team they probably shouldn't have lost to. And uh, I think this might be the game where Oklahoma is going to mess up at. I act, I'm going to disagree. I think Oklahoma, I think the Sooners get it done. Uh, close, close one. TCU, though, great team, great team. Didn't expect to see them in this game. SEC Championship, Georgia and Auburn. This will be the second time these two teams have played one another, and Auburn defeated Georgia mm -hmm. handedly uh, at Jordan-Hare Stadium when Auburn uh, knocked off their first number one team, of course, made their run that they've made now. With a win, one of these teams is undoubtedly, uh, I would think, going to be in the college football playoff. Who do you think wins this game? You know, Auburn is going to... They were at home when they uh, defeated Georgia. This time they're going to be in Atlanta for the SEC championship, which is almost a home field advantage sort of for Georgia. But even in the neutral site, I still think Auburn's going to get it done. I think you are right. Uh, I think Auburn's going to get – Auburn is the hottest team in the country right now. Uh, they're going to get the job done and be the first two-loss team to appear in the college football I'm playoff. I'm going to say it hurts for me having to sit there and say all of this. Well, my question <laughs> for you is, I want to ask you this before we move on to these last few games. If Auburn wins this game, Georgia is now a two-loss team. They're not getting into playoffs. Right. Period. They lost, but though they did only lose twice to the same team, Auburn. Uh, if Auburn wins this game, does Alabama end up in the college football playoff? You know, I think uh, you would need Oklahoma to lose this week for Alabama to get in, and you would need you would need them if you're going to have one uh, team. But if two teams lose, they'll definitely be in. But I don't think with Ohio State, if they were to win their game, I think. They're going to go into the playoffs, and the same with Miami beating Clemson. They'll go back into the playoffs, and if Georgia wins, they'll definitely go back into the playoffs. Um, so I don't think I'm going to make it unless Oklahoma loses. See, I actually think if Auburn wins, Alabama has a better chance than if Georgia wins, in my opinion, because Georgia will then still be a one-loss team, uh, and it, it, you know Georgia beat Auburn. I mean, and of course Alabama couldn't get the job done against Auburn. I don't know. We'll see. Certainly going to be a uh, Going to need some help for Alabama to get in. Of course, the MWC Championship, Fresno State, and Boise State. Who you got winning this one? Well, they played her last week already, and now here are for round two. And it was Fresno State who beat my, uh, Boise State last week, and I'm going to go with Fresno State again. I think you are right. I got Fresno State winning this game. Fresno State's a perennial uh, powerhouse in football, and they're not disappointing this year. I think they get the job done again. The ACC Championship in Charlotte, the Miami and Clemson. Of course, if Miami had won their game last week, it having more implications. I mean, you could have two ACC teams in the top four. Not happening now. Miami or Clemson, who wins this one? I am going to go with Miami on this Ooh. one. I, I'm gonna see a, I want to see an upset. I think that's going to happen. Um, Clemson's a great football team, but I think Miami had a they, they had a bad week last week, and they certainly showed that when they lost to Pitt. Yeah. But I think they might be able to rebound from this and win it. I'm going to go with Clemson here. I think Clemson continues the streak, and uh, Miami finds himself wondering what happened. To, to ruin what was going to be an undefeated season. And, of course, the Big Ten Championship, Ohio State and Wisconsin. Uh, Wisconsin has a chance to be the only Power Five conference team undefeated going into the college football playoff. Surely if they win, they're in. Mm -hmm. uh, with a loss, I don't think they're in. But does Ohio State get the job done against the Badgers? Well, uh, Wisconsin's been perfect all season long, but this is where it's going to come to an end. I think Ohio State's going to defeat Wisconsin. I am going to go with Wisconsin, my good bud Dylan Thomas from Wisconsin. He's, a, he's been a big Badgers fan. I think the Badgers are going to get the job done, uh, and they go in undefeated, possibly number one seed. Let's talk about our top uh, six picks to close out the college football roundup today. Who do you got as your – let's start with number one. Who do you have as your number one team in uh, college football playoff rankings this week? If it was – if the playoffs are today, I'd put Wisconsin at number one. 
I can see that. Yeah, I mean, undefeated. It, yeah, they're a Power Five team. They've got. They're in a good conference. They've That's beaten right. a lot of good teams. And it, yeah, and it's maybe not the strongest conference in the country, but it's a Power Five conference. How can you say that it, as an undefeated team? I agree with you. I've got Wisconsin at number one. Number two, I'm gonna go to Clemson. I can go along with that. I got Clemson too. Their only losses to Syracuse. Right. Uh, they're not gonna lose this weekend, in my opinion. Though you think they will. Um, do you think Miami is going to move up next week if into the top four if they win this I game? I think they would, yeah. Um, certainly mm -hmm. would beat the what is right now, as, as of the AP poll, the number one team in the country. Mm -hmm. That should definitely put them back in there. Wouldn't loss. Mm -hmm. They should. If, if Clemson get back in there, Miami should be able to get back in there. Well, I, 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 I could see that. Though I think if Miami wins the ACC championship game, we may not have an ACC team in the college football playoff. Could be wrong. I think uh, they're going to have a tough time cracking the top unless some teams fall. Number three, who do you got? I'm going to put Auburn at number three. Mm -hmm. uh, they, like we mentioned already, they've been two top number one teams already within very uh, two weeks, right? Mm -hmm. And they've shown a great uh, season late into it. Uh, Two losses. One comes from Clemson. They're one from LSU. LSU's a decent team, mm -hmm. um, but I think Auburn deserves the number three spot. All right, number three, I have Oklahoma. I think the Sooners get the job done this week. They'll probably stay at number three, potentially number two. I just don't see them moving up to number one. Uh, though we may be surprised tonight when the rankings come out that the Sooners are number one. I think for some reason the college football playoff committee is not giving credit due to an undefeated Wisconsin team. I right. don't know. We'll see. Number four, East Carolina. Just kidding. Okay. I'm just kidding. Say, number four at the bottom, but uh, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm going to put Oklahoma at number four. They've, they've got a good season this year. Um, and I certainly think them against Wisconsin would be a good team. A I've, good matchup. I got Auburn for the simple reason that they're a two-loss team. And I think that if Auburn wins this weekend, they possibly move up into that two-to-three to three matchup. But if Auburn wins, no doubt they're going to be in the college football playoff. Who's your number five team? I'm going to put Alabama there. Mm. Um, on the outside looking in, but they certainly, certainly could get back in it. Um, but as it stands right now, they're certainly not playoff material as of right now. Well, I've got Alabama there, too. I will tell you that if Oklahoma or Clemson or Auburn loses this week, um, Alabama slides in, uh, potentially. Um, and then, of course, who's your number 16? I'm going to put UCF there. I can Undefeated. See that. Yeah. They've got a great uh, – and I think they should be recognized for that. And, uh, you know, certainly they, they deserve that recognition. They've yeah. undefeated and – Possibly all the way. I've got them looking at, uh, on the outside, looking in to the top six, mainly because I think I got to win the conference championship game this week against Memphis, who is a good team. I'm going to put Georgia here because if Georgia wins this game this weekend, they, I think there's no way you can't put them in the college football right. playoff. Um, so I'm going to put Georgia there. And of course, that is your college football roundup for your Tuesday edition of Live at Five. I enjoyed it. Me too. As always, and we've got loads to talk about next week because next week, if I'm not mistaken, on Tuesday night, they will be predicting, not predicting, they will be setting in stone mm -hmm. who will play in the college football playoff. Is it Tuesday or Sunday? It's every, I believe it's Tuesday. I believe I believe right so. now it's been every Tuesday. Yeah. Um, but maybe they might change it I think, to I think they change it to Sunday when they make the uh, when they actually make the projection. But we'll be talking all about it next Tuesday. We also got one game to cover next week, too. That's right, Army, Army and Navy. Navy. Yep, the traditional Army-Navy game. That'll be the following week, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, Navy just put out some sweet oh, uniforms. Yes. Did you see that? Looks really, so really look, look, Blue looks Angels. good. Mm -hmm. So, folks, that's it. The college football roundup. Russell, always a pleasure. Thanks for having me. I love doing this. Well, good. And we'll be back <laughs> next Tuesday to wrap up all the conference title games and talk about bowl season. Folks, stay with us. More weather and sports right after this. Willow Tree Antiques and Gifts is all about rustic home decor and gifts. You will always find a variety of unique antiques, vintage, and new items in our shop. Come and see our selection of housewarming, new baby, and wedding gifts. For the man in your life, we have many collectibles, boker knives, and leather. And ladies love the jewelry, purses, candles, hats, and t-shirts. We also offer a 30-day layaway program. Come and experience shopping at Willow Tree Antiques and Gifts.
And now we will go to Kelsey Rushing for today's five-day weather forecast. Thanks, Haley. Today's five-day weather forecast is brought to you by Medical Center Pharmacy. I hope you've been enjoying our new five-day weather forecast. And speaking of that, let's go ahead and jump right back into that. Wednesday will be partly cloudy with a 10% chance of rain and a high of 69 with a low of 41. Thursday will be mostly sunny despite that with also a 10% chance of rain and a high of 65 and a low of 45 with showers late in that evening. Friday will be partly cloudy as well with a 20% chance of rain and a high of 65 as also and a low of 39 with late showers that evening as well. Saturday will have occasional rain with a, it's a 50% chance of rain so make sure you have umbrella, coat, hat, something to protect you from all this wet weather and a high of 55 and a low of 37. Sunday will be sunny with a 10% chance of rain and a high of 63 and low of 34. Now moving on to tomorrow's local highs for throughout the county. Norm, all the round through Norman, L.B., Hoffman, Rockingham, and Hamlet will have a high of 69. Thank you for joining, for joining me for your weather forecast, and we'll go back to the news desk with Sierra and Haley. Thanks for joining us tonight for this Tuesday edition of Live at Five. So there is a ton of stuff going on with, you know, Christmas being pretty much right around the corner. Tonight at 7, the Cole Plaza Christmas tree lighting. And Friday, December 1st, from 5 to 8 p.m., LRB will be having their hometown Christmas celebration. And then on Saturday, December 2nd, from 8.30 until 10.30 a.m., it's going to be Breakfast with Santa at the Hamlet City Ooh. Fire Department. It's $5 for a pancake plate, and all the proceeds go to purchase um, items for Toys for Tots. Wow, that's a really awesome And thing I love too. pancakes, so. Uh, yes, pancakes, <laughs> always pancakes. I don't, when did it get Christmas time? I've, it's crazy. I know. I know you're still waiting to do all your shopping. Yep. You gotta be under pressure. Gotta be under pressure. Crazy I've lazy. actually purchased a few things. Oh my things. gosh, Art, do you have a favorite? I know. <laughs> a, few things. a few things have been purchased. A few things. My tree's not decorated yet. Oh, I don't even have my tree out yet, so forget about it. Not decorated. I'll yet. probably be the last minute doing that. Yep. But please go out and participate in all these things and support our community with all these awesome holiday happenings. Absolutely. Good night, Richmond County. Thank you.